Good morning folks, how's it going? It's Des Catties. Come out into the woods for a little bimble. Gonna have a spot of breakfast. Um, gonna knock up some liquid gold and uh, just be doing a few other little bits around the, uh, around the fire, around the little camp that I'm gonna have set up today. So uh, stay tuned for, uh, for hopefully another exciting episode with Des Catties. There's still plenty of yarrow around and uh, I'm not going to uproot it but I'm just going to take that bit off now. now apparently, well, the Latin name for it is Achillea millifolium I do believe, something along them lines. Uh, I think it was Achilles during the Trojan Wars. They used to put this leaf in with the bandages and it was supposed to act as a hemostat of types and uh, it would sort of help um, absorb the blood in the cuts of the injured soldiers now apparently you can use it for nosebleeds just by sniffing it never tried that one um, but the one that i have tried and i had definitely works and that is just to get a bunch of the leaves hang them up in your shed or wherever and allow them to dry then take the leaf stem or take the bits off the leaf off the stems place them in a little tub and if you cut yourself and literally just sprinkle that on a cut what it does it staunches the flow of bleeding now I've used them on on little cuts and it's amazing because it literally will form a scab the blood absorbs into the leaf and it will drop off and it'll either stop the bleeding or what you can do is place some more on your cut and then what happens is it does the same process again if there is some chemical in the arrow I don't know I dare say there is if you're a scientist or a botanist or all that sort of thing but I definitely know that it works from my own experience it definitely works with cuts all right so that's yarrow all right so that's my own experience with that one Yeah, so it's a great addition to your first aid kit if you want to save on using plasters and that sort of thing and you want to go a little bit more primitive then you can use the arrow leaves for what I previously aforementioned so really simple hang it up in your shed or somewhere dry you can put it in a food it in a dryer if you wish help speed up the process and then literally run your thumb and finger down the leaves will come off the stems no problem put it into a little tub and then either just stick it in your pocket or put it in, a, in your inside your first aid kit
Nothing that'll do. So we are expecting rain in a little while. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll stay in this little area, rig up my poncho off there. Um, I need to go and have a little look see really because there is I know further up that way there's some uh, some suitable woods for burning even though I've got all that lot there but um, initially you know I need some uh, some thinner lighter materials to get the fire going so I'll be going for a little bimble well I didn't have to come far really but uh, off this maple tree there's loads of sort of hanging hanging dead branches and such like so I can take advantage of them for me uh, for me tinders and me initial getting the fire going and then obviously I need some fuels for the uh, rocket stove so I uh, didn't have to come too far actually so that's a result so I'm sweating buckets at the minute it's amazing you know what I mean I don't know I've got the, I've got the you know I don't know what it is I must be going through me change do you reckon that's what it is oh I don't know gosh I don't know but mate, do I get hot? So the initial setup as usual, you know, nothing, nothing, 
nothing you ain't already seen before. Yeah, got me mat, me mat, one of my mats down. Yeah, got the got some water on the go because you've got to do that anyhow. And then I've got the stove and everything else. As I say, we are due due rain in a little while, so uh, need a little bit of a, a dry spot just to keep myself out the uh, out the wet stuff. So, are we drinking the coffee black again? No milk, no cream, no maple syrup, no honey, no sugar, no nothing. I'm just drinking it as it is because some of you people out there like it like that. And I'm slowly getting used to it. It's really hard because I'm only little and it's like, you know, go away. I tell you what though, it's nice all the same. I've got I'm quite impressed with this coffee. This coffee lark. But um, Barney, if you're watching, I have been I have been sort of sending you the odd uh, picture this week of me uh, having a cup of tea, haven't I? You know. I'll tell you what folks, if you are a bit into the old tea, I now mean, I'm a bit of a I think I'm probably a bit of a, a beverage whore, I think, because I sort of flit it, you know, I sort of you know, I sort of I like a drop of coffee, but also I like a drop of tea as well. And uh, there's a uh, the the Yorkshire. I like the Yorkshire tea, all of them, really nice. The gold, the normal one. And then I was introduced a little while ago by some close friends of ours to the. I think I've heard Barney mention it as well with the biscuit tea. I think it is. Oh mate, that's lovely. That's almost like drinking, you know, sort of tea with custard creams if you like custard creams, even if you know what they are. Yeah. But uh, yeah, very nice. So you know, yeah, I suppose I'm a bit of a beverage, a beverage hawk. Mm. Well, I'll get a brew on, I suppose. Oh yeah, so while I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, I'm saying I've been I'm gonna making some liquid gold today, I hope. Which is, uh, if you don't know, it's basically just the uh, oil that you exhume from the birch bark. So uh, I had a load of birch bark knocking around in my shed. So I thought one way to get rid of it instead of just using it as a tinder, I thought I'd use it. Get into a couple of tins, like so, and then uh, obviously put it over the fire with a tin can underneath, and then obviously hopefully the oil should drip into the tin can. And what you get, what you get, what you get left is the uh, liquid gold. So I've got two lots, two tins of birch um, bark that I'm going to use up and fill up a little plastic container. Somewhere I should have a tin. That's my collection tin. Um, so that'll obviously sit in the ground. It'll all come apparent if you if you do watch the process, or if you just Google it, there'll be someone else that can show you how to do it as well. well I've made it for a little while, so uh, what I could do with some. It's actually quite handy stuff, really, even for just you know sort of um, you know sort of protecting your leather, your leather gear or <laughs> leather gear. That sounds a bit fetishy doesn't it but you know all, all your um, your knives your knife handles if they're wooden and such like protects them a bit more um, and it's also got a lot of medicinal um, uses as well so uh, yeah that should be a good one should it and then I'll be obviously having my breakfast but in the meantime water's nearly there Quick heads up actually, if you're um, into podcasts, if any of you listen to podcasts, I do, you know, I listen to them at work, um, kind of detaches me from the uh, from my actual job, um, you know, I listen to the usual like Joe Rogan and people like that, um, but there's one that I've been listening to which is the Canadian Bushcraft podcast, I'll, I've got it on my phone, I'll quickly show it to you. Yeah, Canadian Bushcraft podcast with Caleb Musgrave, and uh, it's brilliant. Really, is a nice, interesting. Um, they seem to talk about. There's some podcasts that they seem to just talk about kit. You know, they talk about this kit, that kit. I mean, everyone loves kit, don't they? You know, but what I really like about them is some of the um, 
especially some of the foraging stuff they talk about. And I think Khalid himself maybe comes from sort of, some sort of um, sort of indigenous background, maybe from Native American Native American kind of background. Maybe don't quote me on it, and you know, but. Yeah, really interesting podcast. I've been sort of just literally flitting my way through them and listening to some of them and quite interesting as well. I like some of the stuff they're talking about to do with foraging and what they used to do in the, you know, what they used to do in some of the groups with foraging. It kind of makes it a little bit clearer in some respects. And also about acorns, they're, they're one of the last podcasts I listened to with him. He was literally just talking about acorns that they get out in Canada and the process and everything else, which is again very interesting. So, um, yeah, you know, if you're into the podcast and you haven't heard them, go and check it out. I'll put a link in the description if I remember. Looks like my water's boiling now. Almost practically there. So it looks like I'm going to be having one of these coffees again. Yeah. Things I'll do for you people. Phew, I don't know. It smells good though, I must admit. It's like walking past one of the coffee outlets. Ha-ha! Not advertising you. Oh, I think I better take it off the ball now, didn't you? Just let that simmer for a couple of minutes. I could have actually bought out my AeroPress today. as well when you drink this coffee straight out of the cup like that you don't even need a stirrer <laughs> it is nice actually it's not bad well it's not it's not it's not bacon egg and chips nice it's just sort of nice isn't it so after the batting ex batting experience last week and uh, breaking that knife. I've left my Ben Orford at home on purpose so I could bring out the knife that I obviously resheathed and put the blade, you know, put a handle on the blade, that bracelet blade. And then obviously I bought out the wildlife hatchet because I'm going to be splitting wood to make a, a rocket stove. So I bought out the hatchet because it's just easier to pack away inside my rucksack because I obviously have to walk through the streets and keep it within sort of some sort of knife law within some boundaries of it. Um, don't want to make it too obvious, so I just pack that away because it's nice and small. It's kind of my, one of my, this has to be, I think, my favourite tool. I think when I broke my Leku, some years ago I broke my Leku, um, being that it's only a stick tang, a stick tang um, knife, um, before I was going to get myself the uh, TBS Wolverine, what I was doing was I was using this for everything. So I was going out with this and just my Ben Alford knife, the Nomad, just the folder. And um, what I was doing, I was kind of trying to get, I was trying to use this as a means as a, of a, as a knife. I mean, I've got it, you know, I've got it nice and sharp enough for me to use that as a knife. Um, I don't think, I'm not going to be batting him with this at all. Um, you know. But uh, yeah, so that's the, obviously I bought that out simply for, I've only got a few axes, don't have many. I've got a wildlife hatchet by Grand so I've got the forest axe. And then I've got a massive splitting axe that I bought from Aldi's, um, which I use literally just for splitting logs in the garden for the log store. Right, I'm going to finish my cup of coffee. I've got more coffee in my pot, which is stewing away with a tea bag in it. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave that there and then I'll put it back on the heat when I need it. So um, I'm going to get a rocket stove made.
So I've got my pencil now, which is obviously a crucial bit of kit for making that rocket stove. It's starting to rain now as well. And then I need to offer them up. See which bit goes where. No, I don't get it there, obviously. Aha! Got one bit done. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Just number them up there then. One, two, Normally when I do these, I always, when it's all made up, I put green sticks on there or I use pegs or such like. But what I'm going to do now is I'll put two stop cuts in the top ones there. I'm going to do the same in each section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it out so it almost looks like a portcullis. Portcullis, is that the right word to use? Like what you see on top of a castle. And see if that provides me with... Uh, with another means of ventilation. I'd actually say that that was a bit of hard work that was. I'm trying to get those out of there. First of all I literally just cut two stop cuts, stop cut either side and was trying to tap it out then I had to use the uh, axe. And then the next one I did I put stop cut in it. That one tapped out a bit easier. Um, I still ended up using my knife for batting. But, um, Yeah, so we'll see how that performs now. So we've got like a, once I tie it all together, we've got that portcullis kind of design at the top there. So I'm hoping that the, you know, vented then the, the flame and we've got the airflow through the bottom there. So we'll see how that comes out. Let's get that all tied together. So rain's kind of flitting in and out at the moment. Oh, 
Once I've taken the jacket off, I'll sweat my arse off. Alright, so there we go then. So this is going to be my uh, my cooking. I'm going to put my pan on there. And, uh, I'm hoping it's going to be okay sitting on there. Basically, going to do my breakfast or my brunch now because it's a. Uh, it's obviously the times the morning's gone on now. Obviously, doing other things. So my plan is cook breakfast on my brunch on the uh, rocket stove. Then what I'm going to do once that's finished, I'm going to break that down, and then I'm going to use that for my fire for me uh, with my birch bark hole. So what I'm doing now is I'm literally just digging down a hole for obviously that to sit into. Soil's very uh, the soil's quite clay here, so I just want it deep enough so that the lip of the tin pretty good actually having that lid on there as well just keeps the debris out while I'm digging the hole because obviously when you've made your oil you don't want it full of you know leaf matter or mud or anything like that or clay in this case. So I'm just kind of being a little bit proactive right now. Right, I think that'll do. Pack that back out. Excellent. can come off and uh, some fires going and then one of them can then sit on there like that and then I'll build the fire up over the top of the tins. Anyway let's get breakfast on. Let's test the pan. You notice today I'll clean my pan up. <laughs> I'll give my, clean, my pan a clean yesterday believe it or not. Uh, ever so slight angle on that pan, but you know, you're gonna worry about that too much. So, cushy wushy. So, it's also very damp, good old blighty. You know, we're you know, we love a bit of rain, don't we? But, um, I'm gonna use some char cloth just because I can. I'm using a massive clump of it. Um, why? Because stuff's damp, you know, so I need a little bit of energy. I'm not gonna just like use it tiny little bit and you know and hope for the best I really am just going to use all this actually what I'm going to do is poke some in the bottom there just to get it going and then the rest can go in very crumbly and uh be our fire sauce let's get that going oh that was running out of flint look God, that's powdery, that is. God, that's so powdery, that chart off. Hey-ho, let's get it in now. Keep the camera rolling, eh? <coughs> Pick some up there, this uh, Chimera and Augustafolium, good old fireweed. Pick some of this up the other week, so I think this can be quite handy. Burnt my beard. I'll catch.
some dry material just to get it going. I'm getting a little bit impatient now. Um, I'm really struggling to get it going. I mean, the wood's quite dry in the middle, I think it is anyway. It looks all right, but for some reason it's just not having it. So it um, looks like I'm just gonna have to go on to sort of eat humble pie, split it open, use this as my base, and then just cook my food straight on there. I've got a fold out glue with me anyway. So, uh, you know, I think it's the first time that I've, that I've never had it. I've not had it, maybe because I've just sort of like, I think my belly's calling really, I want to eat something. So uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. At least I've got a nice flat base now. I can just sit that on the floor there. And then do my fire. Straight off there. Yeah, well, one of them things, isn't it? Good job I've got a thing for charcoal, innit? I've got so much of the stuff knocking around in one of my tinder kits. Might as well just use another bit. Well, actually, I don't want to use everything up. <laughs> it's amazingly damp right now, folks. Birch bar, just clearing out one of my older pots that I had at home. I'm just going to get rid of some on it. That's better, isn't it? I might not even use that up now, don't need to. Or waste materials.
wind starting to get out of it as well, as you can see from the flame. Clean the pan out, so it's obviously going to stick a little bit more. The eggs are, I know that. I think I'll stick them in for another minute or so. Oh, I can hear something buzzing around. Moved the fire. I've placed the uh, my failed rocket stove. I've placed that around the tin. There's a tin on there already. And what I'll do is while I'm sort of in between it in my in my brunch. So yeah, now I've got the sort of building up the fire now around the pot, around those two tins. It takes a couple of hours to get that really going, because if you check it out too soon, what tends to happen, you might almost just find moisture in the water, in the mixture, in the bottom, rather than just pure oil or from the birch spark. So um, it's a bit of a game, it's a bit of a patience game really. So I'll put it in for. I'll put it in now and I'll just keep an eye on the time probably for a couple of hours so I'll be getting on with some other bits if I can I need to sort of sort out my pan and all that and obviously get another coffee on the go because there's coffee left in that pot just a heads up if you like the grill that I'm using this is from um, TJM Metalworks got a few of his bits of gear it's absolutely cracking stuff um, what I have done though for my own stupidity, I can't remember how to get that on there. That's it, I sussed it. And it's such a great bit of kit, this is. Um, I've got the throw down grill that he does, I've got the bigger one that's kind of that size. I could almost use that as a throw down grill as well. And it's obviously got the fold out legs, and the legs are sort of more spiked, so you can obviously push it into the ground to adjust the height over the fire. Um, brilliant bit of kit. You know, well, you know, pretty big kits, quick where it goes. And then I put it inside. Well, I kind of swap it about actually. Because sometimes I have the throw down grill, sometimes I've got the throw out grill. 
goes in this pouch. Obviously keeps all your, uh, your gear from getting covered in carbon and such like. And then it just slips inside your pack. It will go in a side pocket as well, you know, on like a Sabre or something like that. I literally did was just made my, my, uh, my second cup of varnish. I've done it on the uh, on the stove just so that I can run out the fuel rather than wasting it. So uh, and this one is, you know, this I left the coffee bag in here for God knows how long. So it'd be great for career sight in my fence. I think it'll probably come out as good as that black magic, if not better. Where's that rave? <laughs> Who needs horse tranquilizers and uh, and speed when you've got a you know a lot of hefty cup of coffee like this? Pit of power on the back of the poncho. It's raining. I think it's in for the rest of the day as well and tomorrow because we have you know we haven't we haven't had enough rain here in the UK. When I made this, I've made this um, birch bar coal a lot of times before. Well, a lot of times. I've probably made it about four or five times. The first time I made it, I used a big kind of rosies, like what rosies tin or whatever they're called, and um, and I got quite, I got quite a bit out of it. The only thing was when I got it home, I tipped the pot over and it leaked everywhere, and I was ended up with like a thimble full in the bottom. When I did it a second time, it came out all right. When I was out camping with my mate and his kids, um, come out all right then. And then, from my own experience, what I learned as well, as I say, with the moisture, um, I made it once later on, and uh, I didn't give it enough time. Uh, I was sort of trying to rush it a little bit, and then what happened was I basically burnt it all the all the birch bark had gone to sort of you know to nothing really, just to ash. Uh, it just carbonised it up. When you held it in your hand, it would just crumble anyway. And um, but I don't know what had happened. I don't know whether I'd not left it on there long enough, whether or not the flame had got inside the pot or whatever. But I, there was moisture in there, and it just didn't come out right. It was absolutely crap. So um, as I say, I've got loads of bits of birch and all that knocking around in my shed. So I was like, you know, grab out the tins. Let's come out and let's make some of the old black magic, see how it comes out this time. Hopefully we'll have a bit more luck um, this time round. Well, there we go folks. Not bad at all. The only thing is was though, the heat has absolutely destroyed the tin. It's absolutely destroyed that tin. So, uh, I'm going to let it cool for a second. And then I'm going to transfer it into a, a little tub. So that's not a bad wield, I suppose, or yield, I suppose, out the first lot, you know. But I will do some more. I've got another pot. So it goes in. A little bit of debris in now. But there you go, it's some liquid gold, mate. Or well, that's what they call it, liquid gold, apparently. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can sort of uh, sort out that tin a little bit and uh, stick it back on for another batch. All right, and here goes the second batch now. This was an old Brasso tin, so I've literally got... I think what I might do is dig the hole down a bit. And do some... Obviously, what you're left with is just, just this crumbled mass of, of nothing, really. Can't even do anything with it, you know, it's that carbonised, you won't be able to even use it to char, or, you know, like to use it as a char, it won't even take a spark. So yeah, not a bad little yield there out the first tin, I'm quite chuffed with that. Um, probably what I'll do, like, I might, while I'm here, I might just rub a bit on my axe. It really does provide it with a lot of protection. Also good for leather and stuff like that.
not going to spill it this time. To pull it out of the ground, the tin, um, just using a lever man. I mean, you can use any sort of pliers or even make some sort of you know prongs out of a branch if you wanted to. But just for simplicity, I bought out a lever, like my lever man. So you'd be able to pull it out and tip it in. It was actually pretty cool to the chuck, to cool to the touch when I got when I got it out of there. So uh, yeah, I'm quite chuffed with that so far. With that first yield, I must have been. I just hope that this second bunch is going to come out as well. Sitting here waiting or laying, laying here waiting for my next. Uh, so while I'm waiting for my next batch. Oh, the smell of that. I'm going to put a tiny bit on my finger. I think that is. Now I'm going to treat my uh, my axe sheath with it. Give it that lovely smoky fragrance as well, that's for sure. You really don't need a lot of it either. Give that old sheaf a bit of protection, won't it? Unfortunately, because I've got a piece of uh, cordage wrap around there, hanged on there, just to keep that little overstrike sleeve in place, I'm just going to do the bottom half of my axe handle. A little bit more of that red gold. Seems a shame to waste it, really, doesn't it? Mind you, you know, protecting your tools with it. So only give it that nicer tone, wouldn't it? Give the wood a nice darker smoky look to it. I should have really done that with the sheath on really shouldn't I? Let me swing in the blade around. I know when I made it the first time and I spilt it in my shed. It was in my old shed. And the flipping egg, the smell, you could, it was there forever, you know what I mean, until I took the bloody thing down. really took a long time for it to, uh, to go. Oh yeah, kind of gives it a bit of a sticky edge too as well. But, um, I'll let that rest there now. Mm. So I'm just going to wait now that the second batch is going to come out just as good as the first. So good stuff folks. It's good for Zen suit repellent as well. And I think it's good for other skin conditions. Um, obviously the obvious one there, protecting sort of leather and wood. Um, there's probably a list of stuff if you were to search it out on, um, on the internet. Um, but I understand as well, yeah, it is good as an insect repellent. It's also good for dry, you know, sort of dry, um, you know, parts of your skin and such, like your elbows, your knees, or patches of your skin. Rubbing that on will apparently alleviate, help moisturise it up a bit. Oh, yeah, can't mind that. It's stick a bit now. But I don't mind it's bad me now while I'm waiting. Not so much happening, just tidying away. I need the stove now, I've got the fire going. So there it goes in batch number two. Oh god, it comes out right. <laughs> Where's that apprehension? Right, so uh, try and keep 
try and stop the tin from moving while you uh, move everything away from the fire. Oh, 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 that was lucky. Oh, I've only got a tiny drop in, uh, a tiny little, tiny little bit in there. That weren't supposed to happen, but. There's a tiny bit of uh, something in there, debris. But there we go, batch number two. I'll leave that to cool down for a second. Just out of the camera. Let's have a look at the tin. There's so much sort of clear salt in there. Have the crumbly mass again. So, pull those embers back in because I want that fire for, for a minute. Hey! Okay, let's dispense that into the, into the pot the rest of it. Oh, that one was a bit, a little bit more debris in that one, but not greatly. So there we go, that's my yield. That'll, you know, that'll go quite a way. So I'll keep that now. I'll leave the lid off for a little while, let it cool down. So there we have it, about a quarter of a pot I suppose, which ain't a bad little yield. I mean I could have brought some more pots out or bigger tins and such, but um, I didn't, I thought that would do. So uh, yeah, it's quite, you know, it's quite an easy process to make, you know, it's very easy to make. I think you've just got to be a little bit, um, you've got to have the patience and don't get too over ambitious with it. Because otherwise, you know, you, you end up... Well, even though it's part of the learning experience, you know what I mean? Even if you are unsuccessful with it, at least you'll know for next time round. But you obviously want to try and achieve it right the first time, don't you? Because the time and the uh, and the materials that it makes, especially sort of collecting some of the birch oil, uh, the birch bark, sorry. But um, what I might do is, I'm out again. When I'm out again, what I might do is fill up the tins. I might even take a bigger tin and do some more so I can sort of obviously gather my own so I've got my own amount of it and isn't it great when things present themselves I mean I'm going to keep that tin for now because it is quite handy it is literally just that bit that's split on the end now but where I was using this tin this is like an old brass uh, no this wasn't this was like an old um, like a tin that had like a garden twine in there and what that was the the, the the twine came through there and that was like quite sharp so you could obviously run it through there and pull it just to cut it but how it's presented itself now is that actually sits absolutely well snug in there oh actually let's see if the lid goes on as well I totally forgot about that lid so we can put the lid back on hopefully it will sit back in that pot when we can get it back on oh yeah even better look at that it goes on Hey, so I can use that again for uh, making some of the old uh, liquid gold.
you know what, right? <laughs> I'll eat humble pie. Um, one of the guys, Dean, Ronda Essex had one of these, this particular version. And I used it when we were out camping some time ago. And um, you know what, I've always poo-pooed them. You know, I always say using a knife, you know, they're using my, the lanyard hole on my knife handle and, and that sort of thing. But to be quite honest, I mean, for what it is, it's nothing, is it really? I mean, it weighs, it, it weighs next to nothing. I think what I need to do is make some sort of like little pouch, almost like, um, you know, something to, not so much this, but you know, you know, like you have the, the little hole, uh, the little uh, holder to put your ferro rod on, uh, on there. You could almost do one of them for one of these. Cause they're actually really a natty bit of kit. I'm quite impressed with them actually. Only a few quid as well. Yeah, wicked. Wicked, wicked! <laughs> so yeah, talking about kit that I used then. You've obviously seen it being used in the video and I've always been one the kinds of sort of like, you know, why, why bother? You know, it's a gadget. Gadget, gadget this, gadget that or whatever. But you know what? It's actually not a bad bit of kit. I know there's 101 of them out there. But the one that we make, Dean. Uh, Wanda Essex on Instagram if you want to go and check him out. Great geezer, does a lot of um, pest control and that sort of stuff. And this particular one is uh, from Polymath Products. And uh, telescopic pocket bellows. Uh, and they've called it a Spitfire. And there's instructions on there as well if you sort of like, you know, I don't know if you have a brain fart and can't work out how to use them. But um, yeah. Wonderful bit of gear, you know. Well, wonderful, you know what I mean? It's just a, it's another thing you take in your pocket, you know, and have there just to sort of like within your your, your firelight and arsenal or, or whatever. But I've got to admit, they are it does kind of obviously get into the nice heart of the fire without you burning your lips and you know, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, obviously, this is a new addition. I only had it a month or so, a couple of months at the most, but I'm liking it. Handy bit of kit. I mean, there's people out there that have had them forever, you know, well, not forever, but maybe they've gone around snapping car barrels off cars and thinking, yeah, that's a good idea, I can use that on the fire. <laughs> Alright, so uh, yeah, pocket bellows, I'd say this one's by Polymath Products. Whether I do this as a separate video, I don't know. If I do, then I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and get it from the affiliates. It weren't a lot of money, they're only a few quid. Well, say a few quid, probably double a few quid. About six quid, I think they were, something like that. But cheaper than a packet of cigarettes if you're a smoker and uh, probably cheaper than a couple of bars of chocolate if you're a chocolate eater right right tiny bit of advice you know you make up these or people make up these sort of toggles you know because they're great for you know, suspending bottles over the fire and all that sort of thing, you know, something like that, where you can obviously drop that in there and all the rest of it. This might be a little bit too wide, actually, from what I'm about to show you. I might have to cut it down a little bit. But if you're going to if you're going to use your bottle, like a wide neck bottle, and then you want to take it off the fire and you want to get the bottle off, you want to get the hook out or the, the um, what you call it out without actually the toggle, without actually sort of, you know, burning your hands on the bottle. The way to do it is rather than keep it in the middle, it is just to pull it off to the one side ever so slightly. Now admittedly this one's already got a channel grooved out in it because I use it for I've used it in the past for you know for suspending a bottle over the fire and such like. But if you have it like that, okay, place it into your bottle, then pull it out. Okay, when you drop it down, that end will drop down and you can pull the bottle out rather than keeping it in the middle. Because what will happen is if you keep it in the middle, you'll be fighting with yourself trying to get it out. Okay? So, um, just a sort of a useless tip there. Or maybe it's not a useless tip, that's the wrong word, but let's see now if I can use, even though this bottle's quite, this toggle's quite big. But we'll, we'll see if we can do it. I'll keep the camera rolling. Okay. So what we're going to do then, we're going to drop it in there. It'll then catch on the neck. You can then pull it out of the fire and then drop it down and then pull it out. Now if we show you the other way, 
it'll prove me wrong now, you watch. But if you keep it in the middle, drop it in there, yeah, admittedly, it'll, you'll fight. You will fight with it trying to come out. Okay. Ah, which I'm obviously fighting with now, trying to get it out. Uh, yeah, I might have to put a glove on. I'll come back to you a sec without showing you burning myself. Right. Okay, so I had to put a glove on to obviously take it off. Okay, so there's no, pro you know, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. Look, literally just off centre. Drop it in. Oh, drop it in, and it'll catch. Then when you want it out, just drop it down, and it will come out. Okay. Just proves the point with it. So my water's boiled now. So I'm, uh, I think I might even have a hot chocolate, you know. my bigger cups of those of these rather than a little one. And a Belgian hot chocolate. Bloody hell. I mean I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. And apparently there's only so many calories in these. Christ it must be made up with sugar. Flipping it that's sweet. Almost leaves that artificial taste in your mouth, which is probably what makes it, you know, that's what makes it low calorie by like putting these uh, these artificial sweeteners in there. Oh, flipping it. Waste not one lot though, I'm chucking that away. It's wet and warm. If I was freezing my backside off, that'd be a, a splendid brew, wouldn't it? Rain again. under the poncho chilling out. I'm so pleased, I really am sort of like pleased with my second. I've got quite a bit, out. well, you know, considering I put two tins of um, birch bark into that and they were proper solid, you know, with birch bark, um, come out really well. I'm going to do some more, um, as I say, probably next weekend when I go out. I'm just going to use that one tin just to top it up some more, maybe just keep topping it up all the time. But I mean, if you want to buy this stuff, it, it's, it's not cheap to buy. Um, so to sort of knock it up yourself, it's not only a good bit of practice for bushcraft skills and, and, and that sort of thing, but it's also um, gives you another another little skill in your arsenal, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, chuffed to bits with that. I really haven't chuffed how that come out, considering some of the previous ones have been a bit of a failure bit of a result there. So I have to keep trying, see?
Right, folks. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, obviously, a failure with the uh, with the rocket stove, but I think that's the first one I've ever had. So um, you know, you've been bear to witness. You know what I mean? You've got, you're always successful. Just one of them things, I suppose. And at the end of the day, I was getting hungry, and I wanted to eat my eat my bacon and eggs anyway. So no worries. I still cooked it on the fire. Still achieved what I wanted to do, and also making the um, emitting the old. Uh, the old gold, the forest gold, or whatever you want to call it, the precious gold emitted from the birch bark. Great little project to be getting on with if you want to have a go at that one. And it's obviously got lots of uses as well. And save yourself a few quid on your pocket as in your pocket as well if you want, rather than going. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't buy these products, but you know it's a great little idea. Sort of ticks the older, the older sort of uh, skill box, doesn't it? You know, sort of making your own oils and such like. So really simple, really. Just a matter of fact, making the fire use of a couple of cans and then having a little bit of patience as well all right so uh, thanks for watching all right um, in future videos um, I, what I was thinking about doing was I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing always putting bits and pieces in but then I'm trying to sort of obviously put the little kit ones in as well um, and different ones like that and also what I was going to do, I was going to talk about clothing and stuff like that. Just my humble opinion of the clothing that I wear. And maybe you can give me some tips on the stuff that you wear. I am someone that overheats a hell of a lot. I think I'd be terrible in the Arctic. Um, I really do sweat really quickly. Um, really do heat up quick. Um, so I'm kind of just going to give you, you know, sort of like the same old sort of my humble view on on, um, on my clothing and that sort of stuff, especially now with us being in the sort of autumnal, almost winter season here in in, in good old the UK in Britain. Um, and also, it'd be interesting to see what you guys do in all your home countries or your locations where you live, and girls as well, because I do believe there are some girls now watching the old channel as well. So. Um, thanks for watching really appreciate all the comments and everything and all the support that's coming through to the channel at the moment it's really nice really really great it's a nice conversation going on and, and stuff um, and i'll just continue what i'm doing um, if you want me to sort of maybe try something a bit different or um, within the realms of bushcraft obviously you know don't expect me to go running around in my underpants and all the rest of it but you know sort of like joking aside sort of like if you, if you want to see some sort of skill from from my humble angle then please please let me know um, I'm going to keep posting stuff in the community section as well on my on my YouTube community as well just bits and pieces photographs and that sort of stuff just to kind of keep that, that getting that ticking over as well um, and that's about it folks all right so uh, as I say I appreciate your feedback if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so um, and then if you are already subscribed to the channel loving your comments uh, and appreciate all the feedback that you've given us so um, take care Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.